We're going to wait for one more minute, then we'll start the meeting. So anyone who hasn't signed, please type your name in the chat box. Vamos a empezar en algunos momentos. Por favor, pongan su nombre y su correo electrónico en el chat. Where's the chat box? The chat box is right here on the top. Can you see here? Are you sharing your video with yeah, us? Yeah, can you, can you see my screen? No, I, can, I don't see any uh, video. It's on the bottom right corner. Can anyone see my screen? I know. Yes. We can only see your PowerPoint, but we yeah. can't see anything else. Okay. It's next to, it looks like a person with three lines. There's next to it, there's a bubble. Yeah. It so should be your chat. A, yeah, this is a chat box. I get it from here. You see my mouse? It's right next to participant. Ah. Okay, we're, we're starting the meeting right now. Um, so thank you everybody for uh, joining us in the Diamond Hill Community Center public meeting number two. And this is already the second public meeting we host to, uh, we're going to present the architectural design of the new community center. Uh, this meeting is um, hosted by the City of Fort Worth Park and Recreation Department and I'm the project manager, Jin Yang. Um, before we start the meeting, so I am going to uh, read, some, read some important rule about the meeting. So first, I'm going to mute everybody during the presentation. And, and also, please uh, type your name and your email in the chat box so that I can get a meeting sign list. Attendee, uh, please also, uh, if you have any question, please also type your question in the, in the chat box. And then we will answer your question at the end of the presentation. And if you have any additional question, you can uh, send the additional question to me by November the 6th for consideration. And the meeting recording and the presentation slides will be available in CD's website for review after the meeting. Estamos empezando. Um, si tienen preguntas, por favor, pónganlo en el chat. Esta es la segunda reunión de, del Centro Comunitario de Diamond Hill. Si también pueden mandarle un correo electrónico, ahorita ponen su información y también pueden preguntar en el chat y luego eso le van a dar información después de la cita. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned, I'm the project manager of these projects. And my name is Jin Yang. Uh, here is my phone number and my email. If you have any further question, feel free to contact me. Uh, this, uh, Council Member Flores is also in the meeting with us today. So, Council Member Flores, would you like to share some thoughts with us about this project? Sure, very briefly. And thank you very much, Jing. Uh, welcome, everyone, again. As uh, Jing said, this is our second meeting. Uh, despite COVID restrictions, uh, we continue working on this very important project. Uh, as you recall, uh, in the city's 2018 bond program, voters resoundingly approved projects like this uh, to go forward. It is a $10 million project to replace the old uh, Diamond Hill Community Center brand new modern facility. Again, that will be done uh, with the old facility continuing to serve the community, the new facility being built and constructed and then once the new facility is online, the old facility will be demolished. So we're currently in the design phase around uh, the course uh, over the winter, uh, early quarter of next year, we will be entering the bidding process. And then around summertime of next year, uh, construction will and demolition will hopefully start. So thank you again for everyone attending. Uh, I'll let Brenda go ahead and uh, transfer. Um, como dijeron, esta es la segunda reunión del Centro Comunitario de Diamond Hill. Um, la gerente del proyecto es la señora Yin Yang, y ahí está su información. Si necesitan um, 
a comunicarse con ella. También el concejal Flores um, dio información que vamos a revisar hoy también. Sorry, Councilman Flores, I missed a couple of that, those things. Um, pero um, queremos a bienvenido a todos para que empezamos esta reunión. Um, so uh, we have published a meeting notice in numerous media, including the city's website, meeting flyers and social medias. We also send out the uh, meeting invitations through emails. Um, so after the meeting, we're going to uh, post a meeting recording and also the presentation slides on city of Worst website. So you can, so everybody can can see the recording after the meeting. La publicación de aviso de la reunión um, van a tener toda la información también en el sitio de web de la ciudad de Fort Worth uh, para que si necesitan información pueden contactarse con la gerente del proyecto o lo que necesiten. Um, this is our meeting agenda of tonight. So first we're going to introduce our project team. And then um, I'm going to briefly to introduce the history of existing Diamond Hill Community Center. And later I'm going to introduce our current project scope and our project schedule and budget. And later I'm going to hand this over to our design consultant, GFF Architects. So they will do a more detailed presentation about the architecture design. And our public art designer, uh, Elisa Abers, she's also going to do a presentation about the, her public arts design. The final, uh, the, the last session is question and answer session. If you have any question during the presentation, please type a question in the chat box. And I, during the question and answer session, I'm going to read and answer all the questions. Solo que la agenda de la reunión um, van a dar una breve historia del centro comunitario de Diamond Hill. Van a in, uh, hacer introducciones de troyo, todo el proyecto, um, la gente que está trabajando con el proyecto. También um, van a dar información del calendario y presupuestos. Um, también el diseño arquitectónico um, y luego información del arte público. Si tiene preguntas y, y um, durante la, la presentación, por favor, pónganlo en el chat o también manden el video. Um, first, uh, let me introduce our project team. Uh, my name is Jane, so I'm the project manager in Park and Recreation Department. Uh, we, our team also had Jerry uh, McDonnell. He's the superintendent. A district superintendent and Kelly Picard, she is the assistant director. And we also have Ro Mesa, he is the supervisor in the community center. We're also getting support from other staffs in Diamond Hill Community Center. Alfonso Mesa, he is the project manager from our property management department. And Michelle Richardson, she is the public art manager. Our design consultant of this project is GFF Architects, and the artist is Elizabeth Akumazu. La introducción del equipo del proyecto, um, el Departamento de Parques y Recreación, es la gerente del proyecto es Ms. Ying Yang, y luego también tienen Jerry McDowell, Kelly Picker, Pickard, um, que es, también son de del parque y recreación, Raúl Mesa y Diamond Hill, el personal de, de los um, centros de comunitario. Um, también la, el departamento de administración de propiedades, Alfonso Mesa es el gerente del proyecto allí. El consejo del artes de Fort Worth y el del condado de Tarrant, de Tarrant es Michelle Richardson, que es la gerente del arte pública. Consultores es GFF Architects y la artista es Elizabeth Akamatsu. Um, first, I'm going to give you a, a brief introduction about the history of the existing community center. So as many people may have already know, the majority of existing building was built in the 1950s. And in 1997, uh, CBDG, CDBG uh, grant funding boxing ring was added to the existing building. La breve historia del centro comunitario de Diamond Hill. Um, la mayor parte del centro comunitario existente se construyó en la década de 1950. En 1997 um, 
se agregó al edificio existente y un ring de boxeo financiado con la sub, sub, subvención de bloque para el desarrollo comunitario. El diseño original es de la década de 1950. Um, this project uh, is still in this uh, council district too. So as you can see the, the maps here, um, the new building is going to be right next to the old building. So this, the yellow shady area is the footprint of existing building. And the blue shady area is the footprint of the future new Diamond Hill Community Center. Um, so our project scope include the, include the design and the construction of the new 25,000 square foot Diamond Hill Community Center. The scope also include a site design and site reconfiguration. So the consultant is working on to reconfigure the relationships between the new building with, uh, and the parks and existing playground and parking lots. They also work on to uh, reconfigure the traffic circulation in the entire site. And the scope also include the uh, demol demolition and of existing buildings. So the, the old building will be demolished after uh, the new building has been built. And we also uh, will have the public arts design and installation in front of the new community center. La introducción del proyecto actual es en el distrito del, um, distrito del consejo. Um, el alcance del proyecto, el diseño y construcción del nuevo centro comunitario Diamond Hill es 25,000 pies cuadrados. Um, el diseño de reconfiguración del sitio también van a um, ser una demolición del edificio del centro um, cuando acaben el otro y luego el diseño del arte público también les van a dar información. Um, so here is our project schedule. As council member Flores mentioned early, well, the architect is currently working the design phase right now. So we're supposed to finish that by winter this year, and then we will start the bidding process. And the construction will start around summer 2021, and the construction, the, the demolition of the old building will be finished around winter 2023. Ahorita están en el, um, el calendario del proyecto del diseño hasta um, como diciembre del 2020 y luego empiezan el, el bidding y luego la construcción y la demolición um, ya que acaban como um, noviembre y diciembre del 2023. Um, our project budgets come from the 2018 bond program. So there will be 9.9 .9 million from the 2018 bond, and this 9.9 .9 million will be. Uh, please mute your microphone. Thank you. So this 9.9 .9 million will include uh, both the design, construction, and the uh, interior furnishing. And besides that, we will got uh, we got another extra one million from the Texas Park and Wildlife Department's indoor grants. So this one million can only be used for construction. The public arts budget is com comes from another separate uh, project budgets. It's not including in this ten point nine million. El presupuesto del proyecto es el 1918 programa de bonos. Um, era votado y aprobado en, el, en mayo del 2018. Y luego también el presupuesto es 9 millones 900 mil dólares del programa, programa de bonos del 1918, todo incluido. Y luego un millón de dólares um, de la sub, subvención para interiores de TPWD, que solo es para construcción. Y luego el presupuesto de, de arte público no está incluido en este presupuesto de, del proyecto. Uh, now I'm going to hand the presentation over to our design consultant, GFF Architects. Kip, are you on? Uh, van a poner el diseño de ar arquitectónico del co centro comunitario de JFF Architects. Uh, yes, um, Jane, this is Lance Brott with uh, GFF Architects. Can everyone hear me? 
Yes. Great. So um, there are three of us from GFF Architects tonight. There is uh, me. Uh, I am uh, an associate principal with GFF and the senior designer of the project. And there is Kent Pontius, who uh, will also be helping me. Uh, he's the project uh, manager. And there is Kip Sheck, um, lower left there. And he is a project architect. So we're very excited about the, the this project. And um, we think we've come up with a, a really good design uh, for the project. And we're anxious to show it to everyone. And thank you all for coming tonight. Should I next? <clears throat> this is the uh, site, uh, which I'm sure everyone recognizes. Uh, so 37th Street is at the top. 36th Street is uh, below that, the, uh, the, the uh, red dashed line there. And then Weber Street comes up uh, from, the, from the north. So what we have done is just a quick uh, site plan here, uh, which shows uh, the elementary school, the middle school, the high school, this is really a hub of activity uh, in, in the community. And the uh, dashed lines, uh, particularly along 36th Street, uh, during the afternoon, and we've been there, uh, very, very congested. Should I stop for uh, translation at some point? And yes, I can go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, aquí están dando información del centro comunitario que existente ahorita um, y todas las escuelas que están ahí alrededor. Ahorita um, se ve la calle 37 y también la 36 que um, hay mucho tráfico y congestión ahorita, um, solo que eso es lo que están enseñando um, en dónde van a empezar y, y, y dónde están el, el um, centro comunitario existente también. So what I would like to do also is say uh, right up front that uh, this project, when you look at the site from the ground level, it looks like there's a lot of space for a new building. When we started to look at the site, particularly from this area level, what we realized is we were very limited in where we could place the building. The reason for that is the dotted line that goes from the elementary school, one, uh, I'll, I'll go through the reasons. Uh, the, the dotted line, white dash line that goes from the elementary school to the existing community center is the path of travel for uh, elementary school kids uh, after school. There's uh, typically 50 to 40 to 50, sometimes 60 kids that will travel from the elementary school to the, uh, they're escorted over to the uh, community center. And this is something that's pretty important and they need a path, a safe path, path of travel. Uh, secondly, as Jin mentioned, Jing uh, mentioned earlier, we need to, uh, the community center has to be, we can't tear it down before we build uh, the new buildings uh, so that the community center can, uh, can stay open. And then after we're done building the new building, we'll tear the uh, existing community center down. Then the red uh, playground uh, to the west of the community center needs to also uh, uh, stay pretty much where it is. And then to the uh, uh, west, you see those dotted lines, that's the existing baseball field and we'll see in a minute in the next slide that there are some very large light standards that light this field at night. This is a heavily used field. And so we, this, thank you, this picture shows that. Um, and you can see the red dots there. It would be very, very, these are very large light standards that would be very expensive to move those standards. Mm. So. Um. That, Yes. Would you like me to proceed? I'm sorry. Please. Yes. Um, este proyecto di dijeron que aparece que tiene espacio para el edificio, pero cuando empezamos se dieron cuenta de que um, estaban limitados en dónde podían poner y colocar el edificio. La 
ruta ahorita de cómo viajan los um, estudiantes de la escuela hasta el centro comunitario, um, eso necesita a, a, a quedarse ahorita. Solo que lo que quieren hacer es esperar. Um, ahorita no pueden a, a romper y a, a hacer algo con ese centro comunitario hasta después. Um, también el campo del baseball field está muy utilizado y um, necesitan hacer diferentes cosas antes de que puedan a, a, a quitar lo que necesitan por ahí. Thank you. So given all those restrictions, we have located the building uh, in what is designated as the a darker hatched area uh, right uh, between the baseball field uh, and the existing community center. And it's we've pulled it forward uh, so that we, um, it's the L shape there, and we pulled it forward so that it fronts onto the street. It has a very a strong presence along 36th Street. And we'll, we'll see in a minute, uh, what we have also done is we're proposing that the front door of the bill, there are really two front doors along 36th Street and along 37th Street, because when we tear down the existing building, we're proposing to put the parking lot uh, along the back there, and we want people to walk in the front door. So the front new front door is going to be off of 37th Street, and this shows uh, the, the proposed site plan after the uh, building is, the existing building is torn down. And this, uh, this solves uh, a number of problems. One of them is <clears throat> during the afternoons when uh, 36th Street is so heavily trafficked, uh, you can you can access the building from 37th Street uh, without any problem. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, aquí dice que o oh, están diciendo que ubicado el edificio entre el campo de baseball y el centro comunitario que existe ahorita es porque pusieron todo eso querían poner uh, adelanta uh, adelantarlo. Um, más al, a la calle 37 para que esté cerca de la calle y también um, que tenga presencia en la calle 36. Um, también están proponiendo que las puertas de la entrada estén más al, a la calle 37 y allí como ven en el mapa, um, ya cuando se quite el otro centro, ahí es, ponen su estacionamiento mm -hmm. también para que la calle 36, um, que tiene muchos de los niños caminando por ahí, todavía estén, mm -hmm. um, pueden accesarlo por ahí más bien. The other thing that this does is, uh, as I said before, there's two fronts of the build to the building. So the pedestrian front is facing uh, north, but the other front of the building is facing directly onto 36th Street. We've pulled it forward so it's even with all with the elementary school adjacent to it. It'll have a very strong presence uh, on the street. And um, one of the things that we've noticed and that we, when we talk to people is that the outdoor spaces here are just as important as the indoor spaces. And so we're proposing to the north what we're calling the Great Lawn. And this would be a, uh, we'll show you this in a minute, but this would be a, um, a lawn area uh, that kids can play in, that they can play ball in, they can kick a ball around. Uh, we'll show you that in a minute. And then to the south, where it's uh, right at the term termination of Weber Street, um, there would be, uh, a patio, uh, uh, open patio, and this patio uh, would be secured by a fence, so it's only accessible from uh, okay. the, from the main entry. Okay. So, okay. también decían que ahí van van a tener dos dos puertas de la frente, uno um, que es 
al 37, a la calle 37 y también otro que, que va a ser por la calle que, uh, 36. Solo que cuando los estudiantes caminan por allí, también pueden accesarlo por esa, ese lado. Uh, también quieren uh, proponer que al norte que um, hagan un um, un lado que donde pueden jugar los niños. Aquí será donde los niños pueden jugar afuera. También um, van a hacer un, un patio. Quieren hacer un patio que va a ser asegurada por, um, por donde nomás pueden accesarlo de, de cierto modo, solo que no pueden ir, a, a ir alrededor afuera. Um, pero también va a tener una cerca para, para hacerlo um, asegurado, que los niños no se, no se, um, no se vayan de allí. So the other thing about the site plan, and then we'll move on, is that um, there, uh, there is only one main entry, which is from the north, uh, and that is for security reasons, which you'll see in a minute. This also provides, as we mentioned earlier, a very quick and safe um, uh, uh, pathway to the uh, uh, grade school uh, directly to the um, Uh, east, and it uh, provides great access in terms of parking in the evening, not only to the community center, but the baseball field. So let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is the floor plan, so that L-shaped uh, uh, in the, in the, in the first in the other drawings that you saw, the footprint, this shows you uh, at a small scale what all the rooms in the building are. And we'll talk about this for a minute, but then we'll go in, so I know it's small, so we'll go, we have slides that will blow this, these areas up and we can talk about individual areas uh, in a minute. So as you can see, you would come along, you would come through, uh, from the parking directly uh, headed from the north into the vestibule and the lobby area. And that area is central to the entire building. And one of the things that we're doing is making sure that the control desk has uh, really unrestricted views of down corridors, of the main entries into the gym and the boxing gym and down the hallways and to the game room and uh, all of these areas so that there's unimpeded uh, supervision of, of all of those in terms of security. We're, we're, go ahead. Um, este es el plan general del piso de que, de que están enseñando ahorita. Todas las um, habitaciones del edificio um, y también desde el, el estacionamiento donde se parquean um, allí en el norte hasta la zona del vestible principal. Solo que allí tienen que, donde está el control, um, el escritorio, el escritorio de control, pueden uh, tener vista de, sin restricciones um, hacia los vacíos y las entradas y otros lugares también. Thank you. Um, uh, this is Council Member Flores jumping in. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to uh, remind everyone, please mute yourselves if you're not speaking. We're getting some background noise. Thank you, Councilman. So, as I said earlier, we're really excited about this project. We're going to go into the plans now uh, more detailed, and I think you'll see how everything just sort of flows together. And um, And if we'll go to the next slide, Kent, did, was there anything you wanted to add about this slide? Uh, no, the next slides will we'll show okay. it. So now we're going to blow up an area, which is the area to the east, which is the east building wing here. So you can see this is exactly twice as large as the slide before. And so you can see that what we've done is taken this area, blown it up, You come in on the upper left from the parking, uh, past the Great Lawn, 
and through the vestibule and into uh, a lobby area where there will be enough room for lot for seating. And then directly as you come in to the right there is the control desk, which is in yellow there. There's a family restroom right off of there. So if somebody, if uh, the kids or somebody needs to come in from the outside and they need to go to the restroom, they can immediately go there and that's supervised from the front desk. As you go back through that smaller quarter, that's, this is the administrative area. Uh, and so we've got a workroom, we've got a club office, we've got a, a general office for two folks there, we've got the director's office. And on the other side of the quarter, we have an IT room, which uh, handles data and, and those sorts of things. We've got a storage room, uh, and then another smaller storage room off that larger office. So going down the main corridor, and this is the public corridor, one of the things I'd like to mention also is as you come in the front door, you'd be able to see right out into the outdoor courtyard. And here you can see that's a fairly good sized courtyard. And uh, we envision this as literally an outdoor room. You'll see that in a minute, but this is an outdoor room partially covered. So even during bad weather, it, it, it would be uh, okay to go out there. And it's got security fencing along the front. Uh, and it's got a, it, uh, the game room directly to the right looks out over that. And then you can't see it because it's cut off, but we'll see it in a minute. Directly to the left is the boxing gym. And one of the neat things, and I'll go ahead and talk about this now, is the boxing gym to the left, There, that opening there, there are windows, and then the second opening there that Jing is uh, pointing to would be an overhead glass door. So you could throw that door open on nice days and air out the gym, and folks from the boxing gym would be able to come out uh, into the courtyard. The game room starts on the uh, very right there. Uh, uh, which is a, a pretty sizable room. You can see we've thrown in some furniture just to, to let you know how that would all lay out. Then immediately to the right of that is the arts and crafts room. And below that is the arts and crafts storage, a good size storage room for uh, all the projects that uh, folks are gonna be working on. To the right of that would be a, a, a really good size multi-purpose room. And you can see there's a line down, one, uh, down uh, which divides it into one third, two thirds, and that is a folding partition that could come across. So in, when you have really big meetings or events, you can open this room up. When you have a smaller event, you can close it down and you can use both sides of this room at the same time. So you could have two events uh, going on simultaneously. To the right of that is a, a good size kitchen, essentially a demo kitchen that's in the kind of lavender color, purple color there. Uh, that would have an overhead door. So if you're not using the kitchen for an event, uh, that could be pulled down and kept secure. There's a pantry uh, for storage uh, up above that. Going and you'll also notice uh, that all of these rooms we've made a uh, because we heard this from in the community meetings, uh, the previous community meeting, um, that it was important to get light into this building uh, versus what you have now where some of the rooms are really internal and don't have any light at all. So you'll notice that all of these main rooms where people are gathering have the ability, have light coming in, uh, natural light coming into them. And also, I'll add that <clears throat> if you notice uh, the spaces that face uh, either north or uh, east have larger windows uh, be because in the uh, evening and afternoon, uh, the southern and western uh, ends is a is a really hot uh, sun and will will bring in too much heat and glare to the building. Uh, but the north light is is really. Uh, uh, an even light, and so we wanted to bring as much of that into the building as possible. So I think we may have talked a little too long in terms of getting this uh, translated, but well, I'll give it a pause right now. 
Aquí están uh, dando la información del área del edificio en el este. El plan de, de este piso parcial. Um, dicen que, que cuando llegues al edificio, ahí al norte, la entrada, el vestíbulo, ahí, pueden, uh, ahí van a tener sillas para sentarse y también el escritorio de control va a estar allí. También si los niños necesitan ahí a usar el baño o los, las familias necesitan uh, usar el baño también. Ahí está disponible. Um, también allí van a tener la área ar, ar, uh, ¿cómo se dice? administrativa. También um, tienen todo eso allí. Uh, la sala de trabajo, oficinas, um, oficina de club, uh, oficina de los directores van a estar allí también. Um, al entrar del, del pasillo delantero también um, Puede ver um, el ex, ex, el exterior de todo, solo que allí cuando dice el outdoor courtyard, allí también si llueve, pueden a, van, a poner a, van a poner, poder ir a, afuera también y allí no se, no se, no se mojan. También tiene, um, toda la seguridad está allí, solo que tienen las, para, para que no se puedan salir cuando necesiten o, Um, de esa área del courtyard, también van a tener más cerca allí. Uh, también tiene una sala de juegos, el gimnasio del boxeo. También si necesitan un cuarto para citas, ahí el multipurpose cuarto, también lo van a tener. Bueno. Um, y también tienen, querían poner mucho más ventanas que necesitaban, pero también um, a limitarlos el, en, el, um, en el sur. Y esas áreas que cuando vienen el sol y tienen um, mucha calentura, que también um, esos los limitaron o también le pusieron algo allí para que, para que puedan cerrarlo si, si lo necesite. Thank you. Uh, you're, you're doing an excellent job. So next time just say okay and, I'll st and we'll stop. Um, yes, sir. Uh, On the other side of the corridor is the fitness room. That's in the light green there. And that's this is uh, one of the three largest rooms uh, probably in the building. This is really one of the, this is kind of the heart of uh, the community center uh, in terms of working out and stuff. And so, it, you know, the main fitness room, this will be a taller space. Uh, and you can see that there will be room for uh, a lot of workout equipment in there. Uh, and it's got, going to have glass all along the corridor, so as you're walking, you can see in. And the other really nice thing about this room is one of the things, we've done a lot of fitness areas before. One of the things that it's not fun to do when you're working out is to stand on a treadmill or a machine and stare directly at a blank wall. Uh, in this particular case, this room will open to the north, so there won't be sun glaring in, and it looks out directly over uh, this uh, green, the great green lawn that we're proposing uh, in front. So when kids come and they're working out, and their, kids, their kids are uh, are outside, they'll still be able to see them. Okay. Están <laughs> diciendo, I gotcha. Um, está practic, practic, um, platicando del gimnasio, que es el cuarto, el salón más grande. El espacio está más alto, uh, mucho más equipo que le van a poner allí por eh, entrenamiento y también eh, va a estar más abierto. Solo que en la, cuando está en la sala van a tener, um, van a poder ver afuera. También habrá um, donde puedan ver a los niños jugar afuera. Todo eso para que pueda, pueda entrenar eh, en vez de a nomás a, a, a ver una pared que está ahí. Van a poner a poder a, a, a ver todo afuera para que tenga más um, que, éxito. The only other thing I would add before we move on to the next slide is the uh, control desk. Uh, and the location of it allows uh, visual control of the entire facility. They can look down all the corridors 
And everybody who walks into the front desk has to go by the control desk or check into the control desk uh, to make sure there there are members there. Um, but the the control desk is kind of the hub, <clears throat> excuse me, of the uh, of the entire facility. And uh, we wanted to make sure that that they knew who was coming in and who was leaving and and had visual control uh, for not only uh, security reasons but for also safety reasons. Querían decir también que el escritorio de control um, en la ubicación um, es que lo pueden ver de, de todos lados. Um, esa área también puede ver que toda la instalación puede ver don, quién viene, um, dónde está la gente, pueden ver por todos los corredores. Um, también la gente necesita reg registrarse cuando viene. Um, en esa mesa de control, ahí van a poder hacer todo, solo que... Um, para la seguridad de la gente y los niños también esta in instalación del, del escritorio va a ser, va a ser um, lo, lo, que lo que pueden ver de allí y, y van a poder ver lo que, estás, lo que están haciendo en todas las áreas de, del centro. The only other room on this slide that we didn't talk about was the computer room directly behind the control desk. And that's a small classroom, which would be uh, obviously could be used for computers, but also for instructional classes. También tienen la sala de computadores um, allí de atrás del escritorio de control um, para que puedan usarlos. Eso es una um, habitación un poco más pequeña, pero también si necesitan usarlo para lecturas o lo que sea, también está ahí. All right, let's go to the next slide. So now we're going to the left of the lobby. So you can see on the right, you're coming in and you turn directly, if you were to turn directly to the right, there's a corridor that divides the two gyms from each other and the dance uh, room also. So we're gonna talk right now quickly about the boxing gym and then the dance uh, instructional room uh, directly to the left there. Um, the boxing gym is one of the things that really makes this uh, this particular community center unique. It's an important program here, and so we wanted to give it, obviously, a central location also. So, as I mentioned earlier, to the right are windows and a door that opens up that goes directly to the secure outdoor courtyard. The boxing gym would sit right in the middle of the room. Around the perimeter are the activity areas, uh, the, the bags, all the workout areas. And then down below are bleachers currently like similar to what you have now uh, for uh, uh, when you have uh, competitions or people just want to sit up there and watch what's going on. To the left is a boxing, is a small storage room, or actually pretty good sized storage room for uh, the boxing gym. And then um, to the up above uh, in the yellow is the boxing uh, office, which would have glass on two sides and has supervision of, uh, of the, the whole room. So this is gonna be a pretty exciting space. I also should mention that it's also like a story and a half tall. So it's a, it's a very tall space uh, also. Directly to the left of the boxing gym, is the dance room. So we have a, a smaller windows that look out towards the west that would control the any glare and uh, too much sun coming in. And then to the right is the mirrored wall for uh, all along there are mirrors. What we're proposing would be mirrors uh, for uh, the dance. Send a uh, chat thing. For the dance studio. Okay. Um, también aquí están enseñando que cuando entras um, y luego a la izquierda, a la entrada hay un pasillo que separa el gim gimnasio de boxeo y también el estudio de baile. Um, allí en el amarillo también tienen la oficina de boxeo y alrededor si necesitan um, los bleachers o lo que sea, también um, alrededor y ahí afuera es um, donde está el patio seguro 
y luego también si necesitan, si hay competiciones o lo que sea, también pueden poner los bleachers ahí afuera o abajo. All right, thank you. So as you call, go down this corridor, you can also see that the doors to the boxing area are immediately adjacent to the lobby. So that's, once again, I, uh, will be supervised by the front desk, as well the doors up above to the gym, to the main gym, which we'll see in a minute. But the uh, last thing on this slide I'd like to mention are the women's and men's locker rooms, which are directly off the corridor here. Once again, those are, are easily supervised by the front desk, the entries and exits. And there are men's lockers and women's lockers uh, along with the restrooms there with space for future lockers and a, a shower uh, in each locker room. Um, pueden ver que allí cerca del gimnasio de boxeo también hay puertas del, um, del, del área de boxeo. También están um, inmediatamente al lado del escritorio de control. Um, los vestuarios, um, vestuarios también para mujeres y hombres están su supervisados por la recepción, la área de recepción. Y también... Um, All right. Hey, Lance, you're on mute. Uh, I apologize. So now on the other side of the corridor, uh, from the, um, uh, from the uh, corridor that we saw before, where we just talked about the men's and women's locker rooms, and those are down at the bottom there, you'll see the competition gym, which is uh, to the north of the building. And as you're, one of the neat things about the gym is, <clears throat> Uh, we think, and, and uh, we've done a lot of gyms, and the thing about gyms is, is it's good to get, we believe it's good to get some natural light in the gym, as long as it's not glaring light. Uh, it's nice to get some light in there, and so we're proposing some window, a uh, one narrow window up there to the north, uh, which is in the corner, and then smaller windows Uh, along the east there. And so as you're walking in, you'll be able to see people playing in the gym as you're walking in uh, uh, to the building. So the neat thing about the gym is, as I said before, this is a competition sized gym. But then in the middle, you'll see that dashed line. That's a curtain that you can pull down. And um, you can then essentially have two smaller gyms. Uh, when you're practicing or you have uh, other events, uh, double events going on. Um, and the curtain will come all the way down to the floor. You can still walk around the ends, but it essentially divides that space into two. And um, we'll have cross-court um, uh, goals so that uh, you could play a small, you know, a smaller uh, game of pick up basketball or do whatever on either side of, of the gym. Uh, and then the bleachers, as I mentioned, on, on the left, and then, of course, gym storage for all the athletic equipment at the top and also at the bottom, We're trying to provide as much storage in there as we can. Okay. okay. Ahí también, de, desde ese pasillo que vimos antes, el gimnasio de um, competición um, está ahí al norte de este edificio. Lo nuevo de este edificio es que es bueno tener luz y quieren a poner más ventanas, por lo que está proponiendo una ventana um, en, en la esquina y luego también pequeñas ventanas en el este. Um, pueden ver, van a poner la gente que, es, um, que vienen al, al centro comunitario, también pueden ver gente o niños jugando en el gimnasio mientras, mientras entran y también um, 
va a haber una cortina al, al medio um, del gimnasio donde pueden, si necesitan hacer dos equipos o dos um, juegos diferentes, competiciones diferentes, ahí también lo pueden a, a, a poner. Y luego también tienen, um, tienen más espacio para el storage y tienen más espacio para diferentes cosas ahí. Ok. So, I, uh, I think you can see we've packed a lot into, uh, into this building. And uh, I know there's some questions coming up. We'll answer those at the end, as uh, Jing said, and we're happy to answer those. But now we want to go and talk a little bit about uh, the inside of the building because we've been, each one of these rooms has different requirements. And so we have an uh, interiors department that has done some good work here, I think, in terms of looking at all the spaces. This we just wanted to show you. I'm not going to go over it over each room. But it shows you all the different surfaces on the floor that we're proposing for uh, for each one of these rooms. Each one of these rooms is going to receive kind of premium uh, flooring uh, that is suitable for the activity uh, which is occurring inside. And we can talk about uh, af after uh, during question and answer. We can talk about any of that stuff. So why don't we go to the next slide? You might wait for the translation. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're okay. Aquí están um, <laughs> poniendo la información de todo los, lo que están haciendo para el, los, los, el suelo en las diferentes áreas um, van a, de, de lo que van a poner cuando en el gimnasio o en cuartos de director, lo que sea, están diciendo nomás que todo va a ser diferente y lo que está uh, uh, lo que quieren a poner ahí. Ok, next slide, please. Um, we wanted to show you, obviously, one of the more important spaces is you come in the front door and here is the lobby space. And this is sort of from the front door as you're looking towards the front desk. And you can see off to the right there, Uh, the material, some of the materials that we're proposing. And one of the things that we're trying to do with the interior and even the exterior is really use timeless materials, a low maintenance uh, that won't go out of style in the next couple of years, but will operate, help, you know, help the building operate efficiently for the next 50 years. Um, aquí están viendo el espacio del vestíbulo desde la recepción. Pueden también ver algunos materiales que, que quieren o que están uh, proponiendo es bajo, que es bajo mantenimiento, uh, que no pasará de moda, uh, pero puede, que puede ayudar a, a lo que, quiere, que necesitan hacer en ese centro. Ok. Uh, next slide. So I want to just briefly mentioned, this shows a, a, a building elevation. If you were looking at walking into the gym, looking at the end of the gym, um, we're thinking about things like wall pad protection down there low, and then up higher midway, we are showing some acoustical wall panels. So uh, you can have games in there. It won't be uh, as loud as probably as some of the other uh, gyms you might be used to. And then to the very right, you can see that's that window in the corner I talked about uh, <clears throat> that would have north light coming in uh, to, to the building. And the pane down below uh, would be, uh, it's not marked that way, but it, it would be metal. So it's not glass going all the way down to the floor. Okay. Um. Ahorita lo que están diciendo es la elevación del edificio, como, mir como miras hacia el gimnasio, de que los paneles um, uh, acústicos también serán, um, no serán ruidosos. Las ventanas que estaba hablando de, de la esquina donde lo, donde lo puede hacer, que tendrá luz al norte entrando, pero no mucha de eso de abajo no va a ser de vidrio, um, va a ser metal. You're 
Kinnens, do you mute yourself? I'm sorry. Uh, you'll notice that the panels go around the room uh, in in uh, these uh, kind of varying stripes, which will be uh, some of the um, accent colors that uh, we uh, are looking at for the building. And the reason I'm calling attention to this is because in a minute, when we talk about the outside of the building, uh, you will see how we're tying a lot of this all together. Okay. And this this also illustrates that we are uh, really concerned with the noise levels in the gym. Uh, so in addition to the acoustic wall panels, uh, the, the ceiling system uh, uh, will be like a metal panel, but it will have acoustic properties as well, uh, and as well as the flooring. So uh, we're really trying to, to uh, keep the noise down as much as possible in the gym uh, while still, uh, you know, making everything work correctly. Um, están hablando de los diseños um, de la, de, que recuerden um, que en las habitaciones tienen muchas rayas, también los colores de acento um, que están viendo por el edificio también. Um, quieren a poner diferentes cosas así porque el ruido de, de los gimnasios y del boxeo y todo eso um, pueden hacer um, muy alta, solo que lo que quieren hacer es po poner a, a acústicos ahí para que puedan a, a reducir todo ese, ru ese ruido. You're, you're on mute. Yeah, you, I'm sorry. So this shows uh, the boxing area. The picture that we're showing you there is not obviously the exact picture uh, of the boxing gym, um, but it's very close. We, we will have a tall space like this. We are proposing round lights over the boxing gym like this uh, that will give a really nice uh, uh, point of accent, obviously, with the, with the boxing ring. Uh, in the middle of the room, and then uh, individual track lighting uh, around the perimeter where where uh, kids and people are training. We're excited by this space, uh, and we think it's going to be a real uh, interesting uh, addition uh, to what would otherwise be a normal community center. La imagen no es exact exacta, pero en la área del boxeo, um... Allí están diciendo que tendrá espacio muy alto y también enseña la iluminación de, de donde va a ser el boxeo. Los colgantes del LED quieren ponerlos redondos y también tienen iluminación, um, trayectoria de LED que va alrededor donde la gente um, camine y también se, se siente ahí. I think before we move on from this one, one thing to understand about this this area, I mean, we know the boxing area is very important to the community. It's it's it's, it's very it's something that's been in the original rec center. One of the things that is kind of unique about this is we have this kind of corner area of the building, right right to the lower right, where we have these windows where we get this natural light. It, not only does it let the natural light in, but you also see a view of the actual boxing ring and the activity in that area. From that main road out out front, on the other entry entrance point, and that's it's it's just a really nice feature of the building, and it's something that that we feel is really important for the community. Dicen que el gimnasio de boxeo es muy importante para la comunidad, y lo que es um, único de de esta parte inferior um, de derecha que vean ahí es que recibe la luz natural por el sol. Um, también es, es algo más principal que querían hacer también para, para la gente. Ahí puede, van a poner a ver um, ahí afuera, van a poder ver ahí adentro um, desde ahí y esas ventanas. Ok, let's go to the next slide. So, I don't want to get into every one of these uh, materials, uh, but this is kind of the typical palette where we're proposing subtle but 
uh, unique colors uh, and timeless colors, uh, and then some small accents of colors uh, that would occur in specific areas of the building. And all of these materials are uh, heavy, de heavy duty use uh, and re require relatively low maintenance. Okay. Got it. Um, los materiales que ven allí eh, están proponiendo los colores únicos um, con pequeños acentos de colores en áreas es específicas del edificio. Um, también es uso intensivo, solo que lo pueden usar mucho y también um, es, es fácil mantener. All right. Now we're, uh, let's talk a little bit about the outside of the building. I'm sure you're wondering about that, but before we do, uh, I alluded to the fact that uh, the acoustical panels and some of the colors and things, accent colors, we were drawing also from uh, a, a palette that we were going to propose to use a little bit on the outside. One of the things that we wanted to do was not only build a very modern, uh, well-used, a community facility, but a community facility that belonged to Diamond Hill. And um, one of the first thing that, things that we noticed uh, is that obviously Dom, Diamond Hill is a very strong uh, multinational Hispanic community. You've got generations of families that have lived here uh, for a, a long time and feel a special connection to this uh, community. Uh, we wanted to honor that uh, on even somehow on the outside of the building. So one of the things that we started to look at were the textiles and fabric uh, of, of, and blankets, serape of, uh, of, of the Hispanic uh, community in terms of how those uh, work visually and uh, also color-wise. Uh, one of the things that we want to stress is that the colors aren't as important as how they're used and uh, where they're used. Um, this is a community center, and we were told this by many, many people, a community center by for everyone, not just one specific, maybe high school or one specific uh, uh, grade school, but for the entire community. Okay. Um, Kiriana. A dar información de fuera del edificio, um, quería construir una instalación moderna y bien utilizada para Diamond Hill, um, generaciones de la comunidad hispana, y quería um, honrar eso. Solo que el exteritorio del edificio um, pusieron textiles y tela, serape y, de, y como cobijas para que podían apuntar. Será esa información para la, la comunidad hispana de Diamond Hill, para que todos los puedan usar um, y está este, este centro. Okay, so what we did was we looked at this and then we incorporated those ideas, uh, we think, into uh, the overall look of this building. So um, this shows the building from an aerial uh, point of view, which is probably about 100, 150 feet up. So you would never actually see the building from this view, but it helps in terms of locating, uh, giving you a bearing, and we'll show you in a minute from some eye level views. So here you can see looking north towards the main entry, the parking's down below, the great lawn in front, and as you park your car and drive in through this drive, uh, which is on access with Weber Street. Uh, you drive, you park, you walk up to the front of the building. There's a protected walkway there. The great lawn is to the left, or uh, as we mentioned earlier. And then to the right, you can see the two-story double height uh, gym. And in back of that, the boxing gym. And then straight ahead is the entry to the building. What we're proposing, and then to the left uh, is the, the workout uh, exercise room, and on the back side are all the other uh, rooms that we talked about earlier. You can see in terms of materials, um, what we're proposing here 
are is a glazed block, uh, concrete block, and so it's like a glazed, like you would see on pottery or something, and it has a very, it's, it's the great thing about glazed block is that the colors remain uh, consistent for many, many years. You never have to repaint it. Uh, it's uh, vandal resistant in terms of graffiti, uh, and it has a very crisp and clean look to it. And so we've taken that motif that we talked about earlier uh, in terms of the acoustical panels that are inside, some of the accent colors that are inside, and uh, the textiles that we looked at earlier. We're proposing to apply that to the front of the building. So as you drive up, it immediately uh, grabs your attention uh, and you know where the front door is. And one of the things I think is a little unfortunate about your community center now is it's difficult when you first drive up, if you haven't been there, uh, the front door really isn't that, isn't all that noticeable. And so this, I think this changes that. Okay. Um. Aquí nomás muestra el edificio desde um, este punto de vista. Aquí también pueden ver es, el estacionamiento y el, um, el césped en, el, en la frente. También el, el walkway, el camino chiquillo que tienen ahí protegido. Uh, pueden ver que el, gimna el gimnasio de boxeo desde allí, también la sala, sala de ejercicios. Um, quieren a proponer materiales para hacer... Um, bloque de formigión, perdón, um, vidriado donde los colores permanezcan existentes y también um, que se vean limpios. Solo que se pueden usar también si, um, si alguien colorea o alguien hace graffiti allí, también es, es simple para, para, para poder a, a quitarlo de allí. Okay. También los textiles um, a, afuera, donde los ven, quieren poner todo ese color ahí afuera. All right. A few more things before we move on. Okay. Well, here you can, um, you can see as you're walking in the front door, um, you see the windows off to the left and the tall window that looks into the gym that's facing north, so you won't get direct sun there. And um, you can see, uh, you'll be able to look through, directly through, you'll see the immediately the, uh, the uh, control desk to the left, and then in front of you and looking through, you'll be looking through to the interior courtyard on the other side. You'll also see the uh, green space to the left, uh, and this is also, uh, I'll mention now, which we'll get into in a little bit, with the artist, this area to the left is where we would propose to put the uh, outdoor art piece in, the, uh, in a prominent area here. So as you're walking in, you would see that. And the windows that you see to the left, those are all the offices that you saw earlier. So they look directly out onto the green space and th so that there would be immediate supervision even on the outdoor spaces uh, that, uh, that are outside there. Um, and then to the very left, you can see those uh, double height windows, and that is uh, the fitness room. So remember earlier we talked about those folks are in there and exercising, and the, uh, they have the ability to look out onto this kind of sedate green space, uh, which is which is right there. Uh, and this is once again that is facing north, so you're not going to get an overabundance of sun. Yeah, and I, I will point out that uh, it was very important to uh, show uh, what's going on inside the center to people walking up to the center so that uh, that energy, people see people uh, working out, people, you know, see uh, people inside the uh, gymnasium playing basketball. There's a lot of activity uh, at, as you're walking in. Uh, also, there are a lot of kids and uh, middle schoolers that hang out uh, at the community center in the afternoons uh, until their parents come pick them up or uh, till they go home. And uh, we made that large uh, 
uh, entry vestibule area uh, shade structure uh, so that they're not out in the in the uh, bright sun. They're they're under shade. Uh, the the lawn area they can play on. Uh, as Lance mentioned, the the staff offices overlook that. So do the the uh, uh, the fitness area, which provides uh, you know some some security and protection for them. So it's a safe place for them to hang out. Um, aquí podrá mirar a través del, del um, cuando entra el escritorio del control, um, también a la izquierda, izquierda el patio. Um, esta área de la, en la izquierda es donde el, um, le gustaría poner el arte. Las ventanas um, también ahí van a ser de las oficinas. También pueden haber dir, um, directamente hacia para, super, para la supervisión um, cuando están los niños jugando afuera. Um, y luego más a la izquierda también va a ser la, la sala de ejercicios también que pueden haber um, hacia afuera cuando, cuando están usando los niños um, lo que tienen. Um, si, si están jugando afuera o si están en el centro, los van a poner ver. Ok, thank you. One thing I want to, before you move on, I want to mention also, uh, we talked about the materials, the glazed block uh, on the front entry. The, and we mentioned briefly that all the materials we're using on the outside of the building are going to be very durable and uh, uh, very, uh, um, I think, will we'll do well in terms of, of time. Uh, so at the front entry, the uh, white columns, those are, that's a lighter colored brick. And then you can see to the very right, that's going to be a darker color brick, which really plays and sets off the colored uh, the glazed block as you're walking in the front entry. So most of the building is masonry. And then there's going to be a small amount of at the ends. So you can see it on the very right, an architectural grade, uh, uh, architectural grade uh, metal panel system uh, to the right of the, of the glass. So um, next slide. So this shows uh, the green space, the great, what we're calling the great lawn uh, as you're walking in uh, from uh, walking in and around from the uh, parking lot. Uh, and you can see the clear story windows on top that look into the gym. Uh, and the windows along the bottom uh, as you're walking in, so you'll be able to see into the gym. And then you can see on the left there, once again, the um, uh, workout fitness room and uh, above, below Diamond Hill Community Center, the admin offices that look directly out onto the Great Lawn. Okay. No más está hablando del um, el espacio de césped verde que tiene aquí y las ventanas um, de todo lo que pueden ver. También las otras ventanas en donde vienen y entran la gente también que usan um, todos los espacios de adentro que pueden haber afuera. Ok, next. So as we mentioned earlier, there really are two fronts to the building. Obviously, you only enter from the parking side because of security, but along 36th Street, uh, where all of these folks are, you know, during the day, a lot of po people are queuing up uh, to let kids out uh, along, uh, along there to the uh, elementary school or the high school. Uh, and as you're walk driving down Webster, uh, uh, directly in front of you will be this shot. And this is the outdoor courtyard, which occurs uh, right in front and right behind that where the glass is, is the lobby area with the control desk. And so uh, this space uh, is also, we think, an outdoor, uh, uh, an exciting outdoor space in terms of on nice days, you'll be able to come out there, be able to sit down and then to activate the space, Obviously, the lobby's right behind there with the control desk, so people will see it as they come in. But to the very right of there are is the game room where kids will be 
uh, 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 where uh, kids and adults will be playing games. And then to the very left, you'll see uh, the boxing gym, the two-story boxing gym. And as Kip talked about earlier, in the evening, you'll be able to drive down the street and kind of get a glimpse in uh, of the boxing gym with the ring there. And during the day or even in the evenings, uh, if it's a nice, a nice, nice evening, a nice day, one of those openings, as we mentioned earlier, it will be an overhead glass garage door that can be pulled up and then you can air out the gym and kids can walk back and forth between the gym and the outdoor space. Once again, this is all supervised by the front desk, easily seen, and the outdoor, as you can see, we're proposing a fence. So the only way to get into this space is by going past the control, going in the front door on the other side and past the control desk. Um, también esto es nomás el, el frente del edificio y solo se ingresa por um, el estacionamiento, solo que cuando se parquea ahí lo pueden atender. También la calle 36, desde la calle 36 tendrá niños que pueden uh, uh, venir de ese lado cuando salgan de la escuela. También uh, más tarde en el día podrá ver el gimnasio de boxeo y también van a tener puertas para, para poder uh, um, ventilarlo. También va a ser supervisado por toda la recepción y también poniendo una cerca. Okay. So you saw this slide before. I think that concludes at least the architectural outside the architectural portion of the presentation. Uh, uh, Jing, uh, I don't know. Do we go to questions now, or should we wait and? until uh, 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 our artist uh, presents. Uh, um, uh, I think we just uh, go on our presentation. So uh, we will wait until the very end to answer all the questions. But I noticed some people mentioned they have to leave at eight o'clock for the present president debate. So if we can wrap this hour as quick as we can, it will be great. Thank you. Um, Jing, if I could mention, you know, Elizabeth Akamatsu did a presentation in uh, May of this year, which is on the city's website. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a translator present at the public uh, Fort Worth Art Commission meetings. However, I'd be happy to put that link in the chat so that we can get to the questions if that would be your preference. Okay, okay. So we'll just go to the, the question and answer session. So, so everyone, I'm putting in the chat the uh, communications FWTV, and you'll see there how to find the uh, the Public Art Commission presentation. And uh, anyway, just so we can get to those questions. Mm -hmm. Is so there just, a way, Michelle, can we go ahead and at least show an image or two of the art so that if there are yes. all questions, the people know exactly what they're looking for? And I'll just skip ahead towards the end. So Elizabeth Akamatsu, who's here today, and, and thank you, Elizabeth, for being here. Uh, we're currently in the final design phase, which means that a preliminary design, which is um, at that link from May, that design has been approved at a public uh, Fort Worth Art Commission meeting with input from community members, uh, from Council Member Flores and from other advisors. So what you'll see if you move forward a few more slides, Jing, um, we have some examples of a rendering of the uh, of the design as it stands now, uh, which is a stainless steel sculpture um, and is meant to uh, to capture the surroundings of the space. And and Elizabeth, I don't know if you want to maybe make just a comment or two real quick, but. Um, I think it's important to note that the final design presentation by Elizabeth Akamatsu is expected to take place on December the 14th. That's a Monday. Uh, that meeting will begin at 5 p.m. And there's a slide a few um, a few ahead that has more information about that as well as my contact information. Um, So this is the meeting I'm speaking about. Again, this will be the final design presentation where people can give input um, on this design before it moves forward into a commission, which would be uh, when when Liz begins to fabricate her artwork. But anyway, I don't wanna take away from our question time. So um, we'd be happy to stay on if you'd like. 
Hi, Michelle. Hi, everyone. This is Elizabeth Akamatsu, and I just wanted to say um, thank you again. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get to talk. Um, I miss everybody, and um, I'm just grateful for this wonderful opportunity. But um, I too want to watch the debates. It's, um, it's <laughs> going to be exciting. So um, thank you very much. Bye. Okay, so let's just go to a question and answer session. I'm going to read through all the questions, so we'll answer that quickly. So the first question from Roxanne, she's asking, will the competition gene be regulation size, regulation size to be able to host CD bas basketball games with enough space for stands for spectators? Um, yeah, my answer is yes. Lance, can you answer this question? Uh, the answer is yes. So, and Ken, you can uh, join in here. But yes, it's a regulation size gym uh, for competitions, and then um, you've got seating off to the side for uh, crowds that that come in. Okay. The next question is from George Fallon. Um, he concerned. I'm concerned that not enough room is being allowed for senior citizen arts rooms and after school activity for our youngs. Do you do we really need all that space for physical activity for adults when Planet Fitness only charge ten dollars a month? Lance, can you help me answer this question? Well, all, uh, we designed the the uh, community center um, uh, so that everyone can everyone can use it. The room, the game rooms, the uh, all of the rooms are available to senior citizens as well as young people. Um, and in terms of the size of the spaces, we have not given any extra room. For instance, uh, our our task we were tasked with a competition size gym. So we have uh, we've given that. Uh, in terms of the boxing gym, it's about the same size. It's roughly the same size as you have now. Uh, the fitness room, uh, it uh, accommodates all the equipment uh, that we we were told was going to be in there. And then um, uh, the meeting room, uh, that uh, accommodates all the people uh, that we were told uh, were going to be meeting in there. So there's no extra space in terms of the function that have to happen in this building. Yeah, every, every, every line I'd like to make a comment. If I may. Yes. Yes, I've been involved in this project and I'm a very proud resident, uh, having grown up in Diamond Hill uh, the first seven years of my life. My grandparents and family come and, and, and everybody comes from that area. And I'm very proud to be, have been a part of Diamond Hill. But I'm just concerned and I must show you this. Uh, this figure that my grandmother made in the Diamond Hill Community Center after my grandfather passed away in 1990. It, it, it meant a great deal to her to be able to have that space to make these types of art things. And as far as I'm concerned, that needs to continue. And I saw the, the amount of space that you guys had for the physical part. Okay, uh, eight, eight to 10 um, exercise things. But how many people are going to be actually using that as opposed to folk, older folk in our community utilizing the art space? Are, are the children in our community going to the after school program utilizing the computers and such? I'm, I'm seek, simply seeking the utmost utilization for community optimization in Diamond Hill. And I, I, I just, I don't want to walk into that new building. That's going to cost us millions of dollars and see one or two people walking on those treadmills. And that concerns me. Thank you very much. All right. Bing, do you want to answer uh, that? Yes, I think we have enough space. We, we, when we first start the programming this space, we have considered enough space for everybody. So you can look at the art and craft space. That's for the, the senior. But besides it, that space, they can also use the game room and also the multi-purpose room too. 
So we, we put a table here, but that doesn't mean the payable have, has to be laid out like that permanently. It can be removed for any extra activity, extra time. And we have this curtain in the middle of this multi-purpose room. It can be separated into two different size room for after school kids program and for other activity too. So like a lot of the room here is not like, like have just one purpose permanently. We have considering to use them for by different users and at different times. Like here, the computer room, it can be also used to teach class and during different time because majorly senior will use the community center up to one o'clock every day. Uh, every afternoon and after that the school kids will come in so they have a different time schedule using this community center so we're just trying to design this space like more flexible working for different kind of people not like just for one age groups permanently does it make sense to you well just be certain that you involve the community and what they need and not what you think we need thank you Yes, yes. To answer your question, we, we be, um taking to the inputs from the community. We have our first public meeting and we collect a lot of inputs from the from the citizens, from the senior and from the parents and from. Well, well let's citizens. be honest about it. I mean, how much real input have you had? I mean, how many folk in the Diamond Hill community are able to even be involved tonight? That concerns me greatly. Thank you. All um, right. Uh, so let me uh, let me say something right here to, to George's concern. I understand that it's always difficult to get uh, as much input as we seek. Uh, our first public meeting was uh, decently attended. We had several people from the community come out and put uh, indicator dots on what they wanted to see. We got input from them on what the uh, new community center ought to have in COVID-19 restrictions. We have additional challenges of getting the word out. Uh, I know that I post on social media to get the word out. I've seen conversations going on here in our chat that um, the community center will be posting a recording of this meeting and make available the presentations that come to people. Uh, Jing is making herself available as the project manager to be contacted directly uh, by folks that may see this presentation later and, and to be and to be honest, we're, we're making, I think, a good effort to hear from everyone. And, you know, we appreciate the committees and the stakeholder inputs here. Uh, so we'll continue to make those outreaches. And then I ask each of you attending here at these meetings who are at the community level and representatives of the community to reach out to your neighbors and tell them about this uh, presentation. Tell them what you've heard and invite them to make an outreach out to staff, myself, or anyone else that, that may have this information so we can spread the word and uh, and keep doing the utmost uh, to collect community input. Yes, thank you, Council Member Forrest. Um, so just to uh, make, 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 draw, uh, make, just to clarify, for the first public meeting, we do have a lot of people uh, attend our first public meeting and give us inputs. Um, for this public meeting, since this is a, a COVID-19 situation, we are following the city safety uh, procedure to host this virtual meeting. But as I mentioned earlier, we can uh, we record the meeting presentation and we will post all the information in city's website to make it available for the community to to look at it after even after this presentation. And Raw can also print out the, the meeting presentation to hard copy and also can can play the, the meeting recording in the community center for the seniors so that everybody can have an understanding of what's going on during this presentation. And they can also reach me after this presentation with any extra comments and questions. Thank you. Well, I just want to say it's unfortunate because in my opinion, you know, it's a technological uh, issue that uh, minorities and the disenfranchised aren't able to get this information. I'm a member of the City of Fort Worth Water and Wastewater Capital Improvements Program, and we just barely put this on the internet uh, at the last two meetings, but it has never been done before. And it's just it's just another issue of uh, uh, disenfranchised and minority folks not having access to information, and that's wrong. Thank you. Okay, okay let's move on to the next question. Um, so uh, it's from from uh, from June. 
So her question is, how about a gray splash pad or a second playground? So for the playground, is um, it was renovated in 2015. So we're not touching the playground in this design. So our our consultant is uh, is managing to uh, reconfigure the site design without damaging the playground. So the playground will remain as it is right now. Uh, but for the splash pad question, Joe, can you help me to answer that? Yes, I'm uh, Joel McElhaney with the Park and Recreation Department, Capital Program Manager, and uh, wanted to share that uh, we have a aquatics master plan was adopted by our city council, and right now that plan calls for five aquatics facilities citywide, so north, south, east, west, and central, and that uh, right now in this area, it's covered by a marine park pool. Um, when we have other, or currently we have other areas of the city, west, south, uh, that uh, don't have a, a pool facility. And for North Fort Worth, right now we're working on a partnership with YMCA for a pool facility at Northwest Fort Worth and Marine uh, Creek Lake. But once we uh, meet, uh, develop those pool facilities in each area of the city, north, south, east, west, central, then we can start looking at adding more. But right now, if we have funding available, we got to put it in those areas that don't currently have a pool facility covering their area. Thank you, Joe. So let's move to our next question. Uh, it's from Jian Sandu. Her question is, uh, I'm curious about opportunity for community collaboration in this process. This seems like a lot of the same features we have now, and I'm wondering if feedback I gave today will go into the void of actual or actually have influence on the project. So to answer these questions, um, as I mentioned earlier, we do have uh, the first uh, public meeting before. So during that public meeting, we um, have gathered a lot of inputs and information from the community. So all these feedbacks have been taken into consideration in our design process. So our design has uh, reflect a lot of requirements from the community based on the last community meetings. And we, we do have a lot of collaboration in our design process with both the community and the community center staff. So this is a great effort we've been made. And you're welcome to give me extra feedback or extra comments. We can, we can, uh, we can value, we can still value that feedback into our uh, further development of the design. Okay, let's go to the next question. Not enough folk have access to this process, as evidently by kids not being able to get good education in this, this period because of lack of access to internet. So in our community center design, we do provide computer room which can be used as a education purpose for the for the after school kids, and we also have uh, game rooms and multi purpose room, which can also be used to provide extra programming space for the after school program. Okay, next question: Why are you guys is from June? Why you guys are not streaming this? Everyone in this community has a right to know what's happening. Um, we are following the city's uh, safety procedure not to have their in-person meeting at this period of time. Um, this is a standard uh, procedure we're using to do the public meeting right now. We don't have the capacity to do the streaming for the presentation, but we do record the presentation and we will post all the meeting material on the city's website after this meeting. I will send all the email to every meeting attendee with the links to the city's website so that everybody can still have access to the presentation materials. And Jing, I'll just add that I think we've addressed that pretty thoroughly right now. There mm -hmm. may be some repeats of those questions as I scroll down, but there's a lot of different questions and I want to get to those. So I, th yeah. I think we've addressed our format. So yeah. I just move, keep moving on. Yeah. The next question from Roxanne. Um, her question is: Does the kitchen are open up to the multi-purpose room for cooking demos and interaction between the kitchen and the room? Uh, the answer is yes. We have the curtain that can be removed during the um, if needed, so the kitchen can be used to do the cooking demo uh, demonstration. 
So the next question is, the senior definitely used the rec center a significant amount, and I'm not seeing their needs represented. As I mentioned earlier, um, we have draft room and other space for the senior, even the game room and the multi conference room can be used by the senior too. So it's, we're not designing this community center just for one specific age group. We're designing the community center for multi multi-purpose room. We're designed for different kind of age groups. So the next question. Okay, so I see people talking about preferring a pool and a splash pad. That question has been answered by Joe. And Roxanne mentioned this information should be should definitely be shared at the neighborhood meeting next Tuesday. I will provide the meeting information so that you, you can share that next, during your neighborhood meeting. Okay, so I guess I guess I, I can cover all the questions here. There's some duplicate questions. We're not going to answer that twice. Um, something I'd, I'd request that I, I know information that our consultant team has, but Jing, if we could put the size, the current size of say the, the room, the multi-purpose room in the current building and compare that to the overall square footage that we're gonna have for multi-purpose rooms, classrooms, all of that, if we could put that comparison out there, I think people um, are going to would be surprised to see how much more room there's going to be overall. And just for a quick number, because I bet you have it off the top of your head, what's the square footage of the existing building with boxing gym uh, compared to the, this building's twenty five thousand? I want to say it's sixteen thousand for the current uh, facility. Is that correct? Seven, Seventeen thousand square foot. Yeah. So as far as concerns about space. We're growing this building by a factor of what's that, seventeen thousand to twenty-five? Whose math's good? Is that is that seven? Fifty percent <laughs> um, more. Fifty percent more square foot, and it's going to be laid out better. The existing building has an addition onto it, so it's not laid out well. It doesn't max. In other words, it doesn't maximize that that footprint of seventeen thousand. We're we're going to do a new building at twenty-five. It, it's going to seem very large. Uh, or, you know, a lot more space. Yeah, the other thing I would mention is that uh, the lighter lines there are furniture, but that, that just shows suggestions for where furniture would be. Um, flexibility was one of our main concerns, as Jen mentioned earlier. So uh, multi-purpose room is exactly that. You can move the furniture around, you can take it you can take it out. You can put it all into the chair storage area. A game room could be moved around. All of these spaces are sort of have maximum flexibility uh, and visibility uh, from from the from the control desk. That's not what you currently have because the spaces in your existing building are somewhat oddly shaped in some, in certain areas. Your usable area is, I would say, is even less than seventeen thousand square feet. Does anyone have any extra information or questions you want to ask? Uh, Jing, just uh, just a comment, um, and and I'll let you uh, uh, determine uh, how to best do this. You know, uh, please, if we're going to wrap this up now, and I know it's getting late, mm -hmm. uh, we have an upcoming meeting, do we not? No, this is the this is the last public meeting we're going to have. Okay, all right. Well, I just wanted to be sure if we have any other subsequent meetings that uh, we let folks know about it. But again, uh, let me just reiterate in light of some of the concerns uh, circulated here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, please supply uh, the community center folks with uh, any materials that they need uh, to uh, to give to people. And if yeah. necessary, maybe even uh, some hard copies, uh, you know, with, with a link that people can go to for the full presentation, whatever you think is appropriate to uh, get more of this information out and into people's hands. 
Okay, we'll do that. Any um, other questions? Okay, then we just wrap this meeting up. So thank you, everybody. Attend the meeting. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Good night, everyone. Thank you.